I love making games, but recently I just haven't had the time to put real work into a proper project, which is a real shame. So instead, I'm just going to add to the pile with a brand new prototype. Every time I make a new project, I like to try something new, and as I quite like doing pixel art, I'm going to chuck a new dimension in there and do voxel art instead. Now, I've never done voxel art before, so this will be a bit of a learning curve, but I never do things the easy way anyway with my projects, so this should be fine. Now one program that kept popping up when I was looking at voxel art was Magic of Voxel. I've heard of it before, but I've never used it, so I had no idea what to expect. But it's actually a very simple program. There's three tools, the Attach, Erase and Paint tool. This ultimate simplicity is really great at starting out, but it can be quite limiting when you want to create more complex models. And in my limited time with the software, I haven't found a great way of exporting a model in multiple meshes, like different body parts. And the best way I found to do this was just to create the model in full, and then just delete parts I didn't want, export the model, and then undo. Which is not exactly the cleanest workflow, but it will do. The first model I created was this little dwarf character, a simple humanoid with a big beard. I started by just creating a simple blocky shape that has roughly the correct proportions, and then chiseled it out from there until I got something I was quite happy with. Once the model was done, I exported the body and the arms into three separate meshes to be animated in Unity. But the biggest issue using Magic of Voxel for me is it doesn't exactly create the nicest meshes at all. Importing them into Blender shows the weird topography with gaps and duplicate vertices. No idea why it does this, but I just have to find a way to get around it. Initially, I tried to manually seal the gaps and create acceptable shapes, but this would just be far too much effort for every single mesh. So I ended up scouring Google for answers. And after a while, down a rabbit hole, I found a forum post talking about Vox Cleaner, a Blender add-on that does exactly what I need it to do cleans up the voxel models into nice, usable meshes. I'm going to leave a link in the description for Vox Cleaner because it is a perfect tool for those that are into voxel models. And here's a comparison for the dwarf. Here is the dwarf's model's messed up topography, completely mangled and unusable. And with a few simple clicks, watch how it cleans this mesh right up. Wow, looking like a whole new dwarf. Now, with a separate part to clean meshes, they're finally ready to import into Unity. And with a few tweaks to the settings, they're ready to go. And here he is, the first little dwarf. But, as there's going to be multiple dwarfs and trees and animals and whatever, I want a way to randomly generate colours for the units, so they're all unique. And to do this, I'm going to dive into another part of Unity I haven't touched in six years of doing this, and that's Shader Graph. To my knowledge, Shader Graph is some wizardry where maths and colours combine to create amazing effects, but as I don't want to add any fancy special effects to my characters, I'm hoping this will be alright. Basically, the plan is to give each character a few parts that are randomised, with the rest being fixed. And to do this, I found the Recolor node. The Recolor node does what it says on the tin, it takes one colour from a texture and changes it into another one, so I can either add a field that reads and finds a colour on the texture to replace, or I could just set a single colour as the input and make every single model the same colour. And so, here's my new models in their lovely RGB skins. What I've done is for every model, there's up to three colour changing parts. Red's the primary, green's the secondary, and blue's the tertiary. They don't look like much, but they will, eventually. Now I've got the recolour nodes, I just need the colours that will be replacing the RGB. And to make it random, I want to have it sample a gradient. And the best way I could think to do this was to create a scriptable object that contains three gradients. And then in a the script, these three gradients are sampled and the colours are passed into the shader to replace the three parts. Very simple. Now all that's left is to apply these colours to the local material of each object. Using this little script here, and once I run the game, you can see it in action. For testing purposes, I've gone ahead and hooked up some input so that when I press space, the colours randomise so you can see the wide variety of combinations created with this simple little shader. And personally, I'm very happy with the result. It's exactly what I wanted and it makes everything look a lot more unique. Not just a bunch of clones in a field. And that is going to do it for this video. There might be more to this project in the future, there might not. Who knows? If you did see my last video, check that one out for more context on how scuff my projects can be. Remember to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed it. I'd very much appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one, whenever that might be. Cheers.